The Big Cat Sanctuary in Kent is home to one of the largest collections of cats in the UK. It houses a total of 43 cats across 14 different species, including white tigers, African lions, and snow leopards. We spent the day with one of the sanctuary's keepers to see what it takes to work with these beautiful but incredibly dangerous animals. My name is Freddie, I'm the deputy keeper here at the Big Cat Sanctuary down in Kent. So we have uh, some of the rarest cats in the world, things like Hammer Leopards and some Archer Tigers. Uh, and then we have some cats which are here more as kind of rehoming situations as well. So we've got uh, a few cats that have had to be hand reared because of being rejected by mum or for various different reasons. Uh, and we've got some which are here as, as rescues, um, rehoming situations from places like circuses as well. Every day starts with food prep for the cats at the sanctuary. All the food is kept in this huge fridge, which stores various different types of meat, from rabbits to horse meat. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is cut off uh, a piece of food for each of the cats. Um, this isn't a main meal at all. This is just small, kind of hand feed size bit of food, food just a little snack, but we can hide their, uh, their supplements inside it. So something like that is roughly lion or tiger size, big enough for them to just swallow it down whole and not spit any of the supplement out because they do try that sometimes. So the supplement here is called Flexidin. Basically it's something we give to the older cats just to keep their joints nice and nimble and keep them as healthy and active as we can for as long as possible. Um, a lot of the cats that are here would be living longer than they would in the wild so their joints um, do start to suffer if we don't do this kind of thing. So what we've got here is just a, uh, a nice chunk of horse meat. We try and keep the routine for the cats as natural as we possibly can. So big cats like lions and tigers uh, tend not to eat every single day in the wild. They would catch something big and then make it last for a good few days. Um, so that's what we try and mimic here as much as we can. So three times a week all the bigger cats get fed. That's lions, tigers, leopards, jaguars and snow leopards and pumas. With the meals prepped, Freddy goes to feed the cats, starting with the lions, two brothers named Tiny and Kafara. Lions are very, very energy efficient and won't do anything unless they really have to, especially male lions. So in the wild, it would be the females that do all the hunting for them. So we have problems sometimes with even getting them to come over for these supplements that we've just prepared. Their record, I think, is about two weeks in the summertime they've gone without eating before, where they're just not hungry and much too busy sunbathing to care. Next, Freddy has to feed the white tigers, white lions and leopards. If you look closely, you may have noticed that one of the white lions is missing an eye. Why is that? Sophia, who's only got one eye, she had to have that removed earlier on this year. She had cancer in her eye and our vet said the safest thing was just to remove the, the whole eye and it doesn't seem to have affected her at all. She's still doing really, really well. Um, she's not kind of gone lower down in the hierarchy of the, the pride. She doesn't get picked on by the others, which is great. And she's adjusted really, really well. She can still find things in her enclosure, so uh, it doesn't, doesn't seem to have affected her at all. When feeding the leopards, they exhibit a more interesting behaviour. So what we're going to find when we go in is quite a lot of uh, excitement because the leopards that are about to feed haven't eaten for two days and there will be a lot of um, what we call anticipatory behaviour. So that means basically they're just so excited about food and that it comes out as aggression. So we're going to see a lot of uh, kind of pacing up and down and getting agitated. It's very normal, it's just they are hungry and, uh, and, and ready for their food. As you can see, the leopards are quite excited to see Cat Keeper Freddy. All of this kind of padding at the floor that Hogar's doing just now is, uh, is just that excitement and not being able to control himself because he's so ready for food. 
he's a predator, when he gets hungry his instinct is to kill something um, and then that's how he stops being hungry. What we've got for Zizi today um, is her food tied up to a bit of rope so I'm going to tie this up somewhere in her enclosure. The idea behind this is to try and get the cats to work for their food a little bit more so just like a domestic cat they are naturally very energy efficient and uh, won't do anything unless they have to so we have to force them into doing some exercise sometimes to keep them active and, and healthy. Uh, so one of the ways we can do that is by tying the food up to one of the, the walkways or one of the branches in the enclosure uh, and she's got to work nice and hard hopefully to um, get it down. Depends a little bit on how well I've done the knot but hopefully she should be able to have a bit of, uh, bit of a workout with that. As you've seen so far, a lot of the big cats love to eat, but also like to play too. So this is uh, Willow that we've got just down here, who's probably our friendliest resident, as you can see. Very, very happy and confident around people. She likes a bit of fuss, a bit of a scratch under the chin just there. Um, so we try and come in with Willow kind of two or three times a day. She's a teenager now, she's 16 months old, so she's in her kind of teenage phase. She's not reliant on people being with her all the time. This is just something that we do two or three times a day. Um, she does benefit from it, she likes fuss, uh, she likes a bit of attention. We try and play with her, but sometimes all she wants is a bit of a cuddle and a scratch behind the ear. Um, and these are all the kind of things that she would still be doing in the wild with uh, mum and siblings potentially, so grooming is a really important thing. So what I'm doing here in giving her a scratch uh, along the back here, this is kind of what mum or siblings would be doing for her. And then we do find occasionally that she does the same thing back and she'll groom us. She likes to uh, do our hair for us. Only thing is, we get completely covered in cheetah fur afterwards. So the only reason that we can do this with Willow and that she is um, the way she is is because she's had human contact from a fairly young age. So in most cases here, what the, from the cubs that have been born on site, have been completely mother reared. We've not had to uh, interfere or we've not had to, to intervene and, and take over. Um, wasn't the case for Willow. She had to be partially hand reared. So she came to us when she was about four months old, at which stage she was quite uh, kind of nervy and took a little while to, to gain her trust um, but we had to kind of just stick with it and be a bit persistent so it took maybe three or four weeks to get to the stage where she would enjoy our company <laughs> um, and now at the age of uh, 16 months as you can see she's pretty pretty happy being around us and getting lots of fuss. One of the best things about being a keeper and being able to work with these cats every single day is, is building up a relationship with them and um, getting to know their very individual personalities and um, behaviours. Um, it is a great job really, I mean the only potential downside is it's long hours, it's hard conditions, it's heavy work a lot of the time and also it's very, uh, it can be very emotional, you know we get attached to these cats and spend so much time with them that when um, we lose one because of old age or uh, health problems and things like that is hard. But the big thing as well for me is uh, being able to spread the word and show people these amazing cats that we have here um, through all the experiences and, and things that we do. Being able to show people just how amazing these cats are um, and hopefully therefore influence their kind of status in the wild and, and make a bit of a difference.